Thanks for coming back, viewers. It's I, your half-assed reporter, James Calm, the guy on the bike. And... Today, we're gonna try to run into Sergeant Zonders and see an exhibition by Karen Hagel. And the title of the show is Invocations. Do our obligatory sweep of the installation. Uh, you might know Karen as uh, a recurring character, a recurring personage in the Calm Reports. I bump into her running around the art scene, and also she uh, she mans the desk at uh, Matthew Mark's gallery, so she kind of gave me the the info on the latest Jasper John show, and and they let me stay late there. Well, we'll start out looking at this. This is. Fox with Stinging Nettles, 2019. Acrylic ink collage, pastel gold and copper leaf on paper. Well, I covered Karen's last show. I think it was at uh, Stella Ray's up on the Bowery. And it was a two-person show with Kate Gilmore. So there were a bunch of performers standing on red uh, metal boxes, sort of kicking them for, I don't know what, five minute sets. This is titled Eight Vultures and a Carcass 2018. One of the things I was uh, noticing as I was walking around looking at this latest show of work is that, uh, well, this is an example. Untitled, Blue Hyena 2018 acrylic and gold leaf on panel. Uh, normally, Karen makes most of her work, and some of it's very large scale, on paper. And uh, so she does a lot of work with collage and the various leaf, gold leaf, silver leaf. Dutch metal, aluminum, copper leaves. But I haven't seen her working on, uh, say, a panel or a canvas or anything like that, or maybe just rarely. So this is kind of uh, an interesting development. This is titled Still, Still Life with Deer and Two Pheasants. Well, I was going to say that uh, one of the things I noticed in this latest show is that uh, I think Karen is even uh, intensifying her color. And she's uh, kind of widening the planes of flat color and uh, working with very subtle transitions. That she's uh, kind of. I wouldn't say it's monochrome, but it's it's approaching that. She's uh, put these figures on these nice kind of solid colored backgrounds. Although, like I said, there's some nice nice transitions, like the the magenta into the red. Also, I uh, I like the way that she does various things with the metallic so some of it is is leaf oh look at this this is titled griffin vulture soothsayer one 2018 acrylic ink watercolor collage gold leaf pastel on paper so part of this is that metallic is a, a gold leaf or a silver leaf then this down here is uh, strokes of metallic paint. And I think she might also have some kind of uh, pearlescence in there. So, you know, I was thinking a lot of ways these kind of uh, relate to illuminated manuscripts. 
and the way they would use gold leaf on some of those. This piece is titled Sacred Bowl 2018 Acrylic Ink Collage Pencil Gold and Copper Leaf on Paper. And again, so we've got uh, kind of a nice, maybe grayed out a little bit ultra blue background. It says here the uh, subject matter are referencing Dutch still lives, Pasolini, the Book of Revelations, and Greek mythology. And I think. Uh, yeah, the show that I saw that she was in with uh, Kate Gilmore, a lot of this was about um, birds of prey. And, uh, yeah, this is kind of interesting because uh, although this does reference, I guess, Minoan culture, uh, there's also kind of a subtle art reference because uh, yeah, Damien Hurst did a whole series of cows or bulls in formaldehyde with uh, golden horns. Untitled Portrait. Cisneros Vulture 2018. Well, as I was saying, the last show, there were a lot of birds of prey or you know, vultures ripping, ripping apart little carcasses. And uh, oh, I like the way that Karen is able to kind of uh, use her color and her figures and although there's a kind of uh, almost a uh, sense that she's using studies from a, maybe a ornithology handbook or a field guide that uh, there's a lot of uh, emotional content. It's titled The Stranger 2018 Acrylic and Ink on Paper. Okay, this is more like a uh, straight portrait and I like the, uh, the way that Karen kind of plays off her acrylic, the watercolor, the drawing. And then she's got, uh, looks like color pencil maybe and a little pastel. So uh, it's a real nice mixy matchy group of uh, medium on paper. And, uh, well, Karen is in stiff company because just in the last week or so I've done a program on Alice Neal and her portraits. And I guess the day before yesterday I was in looking at uh, Mimi Gross and she has a show of a lot of portraits up now. But I think Karen, uh, Karen holds her own. Will conclude our viewing looking at this piece Prometheus 2018 acrylic and ink on paper 30 by 23 and again Karen is not at least as far as I can see is not using the gold leaf or the, the metallics in this piece but uh, she is very good with her uh, layering of various kinds of paint paint surfaces and I was thinking yeah Prometheus steals fire and then is tied to the rock and ripped ripped apart by the the vultures but somehow that wound <laughs> takes on a certain kind of anatomical uh, character but great color
James Com reporting on Karen Hagel invocations. Here it's Sergeant's daughters. We're gonna roll on and try to capture some more art today. Stay tuned. on Bleecker Street and we're gonna run in here to Zersher Gallery formerly known as Zersher Studios we're gonna try to get some views of the Merrill Wagner Show works from the 80s I came in and uh, looked at the show yesterday, but I was pressed for time. I had about 10 minutes before closing time, so I decided I would uh, come back on a Sunday afternoon when I had a little more time to look. contemplate, think about. This is untitled 1989. Oil on slate. I'll read a little bit from the press release. In works from the 1980s, Zersha Gallery exhibits work from one of the, her strongest periods, that's Merrill's. Many of the pieces showcase her unique process with using paint on rigid supports such as slate, steel, metal, stone, marble, concrete, and bluestone. Each piece touches on the cornerstones of Wagner's idiosyncratic process. They all illustrate power exercised by chance, order, and time in her work. This is the main piece in the show. This is titled Gorges, 1986. This is 50 by 240 inches. This has got casein oil, acrylic, ultramarine on slate blackboard fragments. Well, this was the piece that I was thinking about last night, and uh, well, Meryl is a very, um, what can I say, complex painter. Uh, she was married to Robert Ryman for many years, I guess up until his passing a couple of weeks ago, and uh, in certain ways there's a relationship between their work in that uh, they're both dealing with the idea of paint paintings different kinds of paint on different kinds of surfaces one of my prejudices is that uh, I love ultramarine blue and uh, so a lot of these works are her dealing with ultramarine blue and how it's uh, mixed in various kinds of mediums, what it looks like on different surfaces. And 
And uh, the other thing that's nice is the, um, it's kind of uh, brutal materialism that's dealing with these stone surfaces that she's working on in many of these pieces. And, uh, yeah, how something that would be kind of, uh, what could I say, precious and refined like a, uh, Ultra blue pigment looks when it's contrasted against the stone. I guess this might be the, the casein. Also, these. Fragments of slate are, I think, things that she found in a, uh, a torn down school. She kind of scavenged these pieces up and took them back to the studio. And uh, it's nice the way she's using the, you know, the irregular fractures as parts of the composition. This is Untitled 1989. Rust preventative paint on steel. Zischer Studio is thrilled to present the work of Merrill Wagner. This will be Wagner's second solo show exhibition at Zischer Gallery. Blah, 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 blah. Born in 1935 in the Pacific Northwest, Wagner has lived in New York since 1957. And, uh, yeah, so I covered a Mimi Gross show a couple days ago, and I think Meryl and Mimi and a whole lot of people that are, that are getting up there now were all part of this very, uh, dynamic art community that was happening here in New York in the late 50s into the 60s, kind of the transition from abstract expressionism into uh, some other ideas like pop art and minimalism. Titled Revisions, 1982. This is oil pastel on slate. Well, I was looking at this piece and thinking that, uh, yeah, if these are parts of uh, old blackboards, then in a certain way it's very appropriate that it's got these kind of chalk pastel scribbles on there and uh, well it's nice the way that the, the surface kind of carries the underlying structures and the underlying grids and I was thinking yeah <laughs> It's a good thing these are oil pastels because regular pastels, I guess you could probably just walk up with an eraser and wipe them away. But uh, like I said, this is kind of appropriate. I've got a gallery of some of her smaller pieces. This is Nassau series number three, 1984, oil on slate. This is much more of a uh, conventional painting. I think the other note that I would put in here is that uh, 
especially with some of her paintings on slate. <clears throat> Probably six or seven years ago, I covered a show by Bryce Martin, and they were all a bunch of his paintings on slabs of marble. I guess he lives in, I don't know, a little island off the coast of Greece part of the year, and he'd collected slabs of marble and painted on them. This is untitled, 1989, Rust Preventative Paint on Steel. And again, we've got a very uh, kind of formal design here. Now, uh, Merrill's husband, Robert Ryman, was probably not exactly a minimalist, but he was certainly involved in that whole group of, as I said, post-abstract expressionist artists that uh, kind of wanted to refine what painting was, figure out exactly what a painted surface was. I was looking at some of these and I'm thinking, okay, so these are from the 1980s. This is 89 and it's rust preventative paint. So that's interesting to see if it's actually prevented the rust and it has. But that's all part of the, uh, the aging process. It's titled Portrait of Susanna, 1989, Oil on Slate. Well, I like the uh, the line there, and I don't know whether that's some kind of uh, rust line. It looks like this is attached. Maybe these were slate shingles or something. But uh, Merrill has laid these two pieces of stone on top of each other, and uh, and then she's put in this uh, little black square. And so this is oil on slate. Untitled 1989, Rustoleum on Steel. Well, I look at this and I wonder how much of this Merrill did because it's just almost like uh, she got a little drill press and is doing some machining if that's her work or if she found this somewhere. And I like the way that, again, she's contrasting the, the paint with the raw oxidizing steel. And there's some very uh, understated color of the things going on. Untitled, Ethelin Sidewalk, 1986 to 87, 15 by 14, oil on stone. So it doesn't say what kind of stone, I wonder if that's blue stone. And we've got the, uh, the ultra blue again here, it says that's oil. And then this section over here is kind of a brusquely painted black. Again, very minimal geometric forms, but interesting color things. Tennis Creek, 1981. Oil on marble. It's interesting. So she's got kind of a very 
active, uh, scribbly batch of work, and then she's got another batch of work that's very uh, austere and restrained and reductive. Especially in this time and day and age. This is titled. Story powers. It's titled View 1984. Oil on Stone. I look at this stuff, I'm going to just starve. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your critique. This is untitled 1982, two pieces, seven by 24 inches, oil pastel on slate. And then I guess we've got what we would consider a couple of chalk drawings on blue stone. This is titled Turtleback Mountain, 1987. 19 by 29 inches framed. Oil pastel on blue stone. Well, this is Nice because again, Merrill has just taken the natural shapes of these found slabs of stone, composed her figure, and then just added this kind of slash of chalk of pastel. This is untitled 1987, 25 by 13 inches. And again, more of the pastel on stone. Well, there is something that's kind of uh, attractive but brutal about this stone surface. And there's some quality of timelessness that that uh, surface has and then you kind of uh, combine that with almost an architectural diagram on there and it's uh, it gives you a little bit to uh, contemplate. This has been James Calm reporting on Merrill Wagner works from the 1980s here at Zersher Gallery. You can like this, subscribe, recommend it to your friends, and leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, and criticisms below. But we always end these conversations by saying, thank you, Kate. <laughs>